Okay, given A matrix is this, B matrix is that. <coughs> okay, could you pl please do that? Um, uh, find A, B, A times B, and find B times A, and then check if A, B time, uh, is equivalent to B, A. Okay, uh, look at this chat room here. All right, let's check the answer. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to use uh, my trick here, so I'm going to use octave. So just to check the answer. All right. So uh, let's see. So what we have here is basically um, a. Oops, sorry. A is um, what we have uh, two, two. 3 and 5 and then in this case B we have what is it 3 1 3 1 minus 2 0 okay so A times B is equal to 2 2 2 minus 1 3 okay B A is not the same in general like i told you is not the same so you have to actually recalculate b times a it's not like numbers yeah three times five equals to five times three do a kali lima two times five equals to five times two for matrices it's not so let's check b times a is nine eleven minus four minus four like i said a times b is not the same as b times a all right so uh I think uh, Lucas, I think you got it to e oh, I think there's oh, yep, you got it, yep, you got both nice. Um, Afik Iman, I think you got it both correct, okay, so that's good. Let's try these two. So, uh, a meaning a here, use this a here, two, two, three, five, find determinant a and find a one so I'll have this answer here so this will be the correct answer determinant of a should be 4 the inverse of uh, a should be that so check your answer there okay I'm going to go a bit into applications here so I need you to answer this one for me all right just type the answer you don't have to type the matrix just type the answer here Let's try that. Given C is 3, 4, 5, 1, 9, 8, 0, 7, 2. And D matrix is a column matrix, or vector we call it, 2, 1, 3. Okay? C times D is X1, 35, 13. What is X1? Given that C times D is X1, 35, 13. What is X1? Okay, it needs a bit of a trick. You don't need to calculate everything. What you need to do is just take the first row, times it with everything here. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to use this one. Yes, 25. Okay. Uh, okay, that's too easy. Hmm. I thought it's gonna be a bit harder. All right, all right. Let's let's take this one here. <coughs> oh, okay. I think I made a mistake. I give that. All right. Okay, this one given a matrix a one two three two five four one minus one one. And x is 22, 0, minus 10. Given that a times x is <coughs> 12, what is x1 and what is x2? Okay. <coughs> like I said, it's simple. You don't have to calculate everything. You need to take the first row times the column. You get this one. Take the second row times the, uh, times the uh, this you get x2 okay x1 is 8 minus 8 x2 is 4 mm. uh, 
Are you really sure, Amir Razlan? Hmm. Let's see if everyone else. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you got it pretty fast. Okay. <coughs> All right. That's nice. That's very nice. You got that. Okay. What we have is a. Let me see. All right. Uh, let's take this question right here. So we have a. Let me just one, two, three, two, five, four, one minus one, one. Okay. And then we want to multiply that with uh, x. So we have this matrix. On multiply that with x here. Twenty two, zero minus ten. Okay, now what we have here, this is what we call, this is the A matrix and this is the X matrix. Okay, now um, the answer is going to be because A, uh, A is a 3 by 3 matrix and X is a 3 by 1 matrix. The answer that we're going to get is you take this number and get this number. So the answer we're going to get is a 3 by 1 matrix. Okay, 3 by 1 also like that. All right. How do you find the elements here? Okay, like you know before, what we do is we work with row by row. Take the first row for example. Okay, 1 times 22 plus 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 30. So 22 minus 30. So I got minus 8 here. Alright. Second, I need to work with the second row so I'm taking the second row 2 times 22 for, uh, 44 minus <coughs> eh, sorry plus <coughs> nothing um, 44 minus 40 so I got there is 4 okay here is 4 and then the rest is okay 22 plus nothing plus or minus 10 so this is 12 obviously all right all right so if you're given next thing we're gonna do is this so basically given a which is the n by n matrix and b which is the n by one matrix and a times <coughs> x is equal to b find x okay so uh, an example here yeah um, Let's say we are given, uh, 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 let me show you an example. Let's see if I can find a good example here. Okay, so given A is 1, 1, 1, minus 1, and B is 3, 1. And if A times something, X equals to B, find X1, X2. Okay, uh, let's have a 10 minutes break all right so i uh, will give you to wonder about this question later on but as of right now let's have the 10 minutes break we got back here at 11 15 or so okay all right um we are going to look at um the problem that i've uh, given you just now oh Iman has already um, provided an answer. So Iman, tell me how did you get this one and two? What method do you use? Um, I did it like an unknown. Uh huh. So e times x equals to what we get to e. Okay. Uh, so did you I mean um did you, did you find the inverse or determinants or something like that? Uh, no, just no. simple equations. Oh just equations, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, equation. 
Simultaneous equation. Yeah. Yes, that that is actually right. That is actually right. Uh, I was uh, you were given a matrix A, which is which has one 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 minus one here, and then you are given also matrix B, which is um, in this case three and minus one. Okay, and then I'm asking you. Okay, there's an unknown here X. Um, where if the matrix A multiplied by X, you'll get the answer B. So uh, if I were to write it down uh, fully, it will turn out like this. Okay, 1, 1, minus 1, because you know the nature of uh, matrix here. So this will be X1, X2, because I don't know what. Okay, and then it becomes 3, minus 1. Okay. So what I'm doing here is basically you need just to need to check what is uh, this. This is what we call okay the solution. All right, and and this is matrix A, and the solution is usually um, written as matrix um, column matrix X. This is A and this is B. So this problem here, this very problem here, A times X equals B. Uh, this is what we call. Um, a generalization of a system of linear equation. The reason why I say linear equation is because if you expand this, I, w I wouldn't say expand, I would say you transform this back into linear equations, it will look like this. Don't you agree? 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 equals to 3. And then next one, 1 times x1 minus 1 times x2 plus okay so x2 equals 2 minus 1 so you we usually see this happening a lot i mean you are given two equations and two unknowns you will ask to find the um unknowns x1 x2 stuff like that okay and if you if the number of unknowns is the same as the number of equations okay more often than not, you usually you get the solution. I mean, you can get the answer for x1. What is x1? What is x2? What is all right? If the number of unknowns, all right, is not the same as number equation, all right, all right. Uh, let's say if if it's let's say number of unknown is a uh, way more than the number of equations, you get seven unknowns seven x x1 x2 x3 x4 but you only get maybe i don't know five equations you probably won't find the answer okay no you, you can't find the solution can't find can't find no solution <laughs> double negative there okay but if uh, usually if number of unknown is less than number equation for example uh, you're gonna have what we call the over determination that means there are uh, many answers for x1 many answers for x2 and you cannot find a single uh, correct solution okay um, so but here we have two unknowns and two solutions two equations so that's nice you should get the answer so Iman said uh, what he has done is he is using the simultaneous equation but let me show you what uh, other things that we can do one is Okay, one option. Okay, how to solve the systems of linear equation. All right, equations. In my notes, I've already given you two methods. Okay, one is by using inverse, and the other one is by using what we call Kramer's rule okay I hope really hope you have read this because no um, is it this one yes all right so one is by using um, inverse all right let's see the first one first inverse how do I solve this equation right here using inverse okay so what I can do is this let me show you here let me delete this let me delete this okay I can represent this in terms of ax and b. So I need to find x, right? So if I need to find x, so what I'll do is this. 
Um, I have E. I have your E. Oh, wait. Oh, there you go. E times X goes to B. So what I can do here is this. I can pre-multiply everything with the inverse matrix. Okay. X, okay. Uh, again, I do the same thing on the right-hand side. Okay. What is A inverse times A times itself? Does not let itself. The its matrix becomes 1, right? So this becomes I. And then matrix I times X equals X. So what I'm left with is X is equivalent to inverse matrix times P. So in this case, what I can do is this. I can rewrite this as X1, X2. I'm rewriting the matrix is equivalent to we take the inverse of this matrix here okay and then multiply it with 3 1 and you can get x on x2 all right let's check let's uh, let's check i'm just going to use uh, my calculator here um uh, in this case as uh, Okay, don't follow me. You you need to actually calculate it with by hand. Well, let me let me see. Okay, that's a uh, inverse matrix. Inverse of A is all right. Half 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 minus half. Okay. All right. So what we can get is half 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 minus half times. 3 minus 1 okay so 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2 okay what would you get you'll get 1 because 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2 you get 2 over 2 this is 1 okay my uh, 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2 you got 4 over 2 which is 2 1 2 is this the same as what Iman has got here? It's the same. The only difference is I'm not using the method that he did. I'm using the inverse matrix. So let's check. Let's check. I like to check. So uh, A is that. All right. So A, what, what is oh, A just now is that. And B was, um, what was it? 3 and 1, I think. 3 and minus 1. All right. 3 and minus 1. So that. All right. So if I um, oh just now x was uh, one and two. Okay, let's let's see if a times x is equivalent to b up there. There you go. It's the same. Okay, so that means our solution is correct one or two. All right. So that is trying to find the solution to solve the system of linear equation using inverse okay i've provided you a an example here i think you have probably heard of this example you know um you know you have you are in a farm you own you have a couple of types of animals you count the head it's up to 200 but if you count the feet it's up to 540 so how many chickens and goats basically old mcdonald's farm has only chickens and goats when he counted the heads of the stock in the farm count the head of chickens and goats the number total up to 200 however when the number of legs i don't know why people count the number of legs but anyway just to make it an interesting problem however when the number of legs was counted the number total up to 540 how many more chickens were there in the farm <laughs> i think my answer here is wrong Anyway, um, let C be the number of the chicken, C plus G, and uh, go, G be the number of goats. So, total number of chicken and goats is 200, okay? Each animal has only one head, so if you count the head, it's 200. And then, how many number of legs? Each chicken has two legs, and each goat has four legs. So, two feet of chicken plus four feet of goat, or legs, total up to 540. So, what you have is basically system of linear equations. All right, you rearrange everything in forms of matrix. So this is a skill, yeah. You need to know how to do this, changing from system uh, linear equations into matrix. 
change to matrix form all right and also changing it back to changing it back to linear equations like this to linear equations okay you need to actually know how to uh, be really proficient in this one so c plus g so i can immediately say okay here one i got one here so one one that's easy i got two and four here I got two and four here all right image do it like this i got this so i know that this is a this is x matrix and this is b matrix what i'm doing is just basically using what i did before uh, take the a to the other side find its inverse multiply the matrices find 130 and 70 so i know my chicken is 130 my goat is 70 the question how many more chickens were there in the farm so you will have 60 more chickens chicken then goats okay 130 minus 70 so um but um why we are using um, <coughs> <coughs> inverse is sometimes you can get the answer but sometimes uh, we can actually find out more about the system equations okay um, uh, you might be asking what not every matrix has an inverse okay uh, not every matrix has an, has an inverse let me show you one matrix that don't have an inverse okay uh, let's say um, I have a matrix uh, let's say M this matrix doesn't Two, two, and I don't know. Then the one is maybe four, four. All right. So I have a matrix two, two, four, four. Let's find the inverse. Oopsie. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, for my matrix two, two, four, four. Um. There's no inverse. The reason is because when you try to find the the determinant, you see. AD minus BC, right? AD is 8 minus 8. So the, the, the determinant is 0. And the problem is when you try to find the inverse matrix, you need to 1 over determinant of A. What if determinant of A here is 0? Determinant of M in that case. Okay? Now the example, let's say you have a matrix N. Let's say, I don't know, 1, 3, uh, maybe 3 and 9 okay let's find this sorry inverse n matrix n okay again it's you don't have a the reason is because one times nine minus three percent they go to zero so it's sometimes you cannot solve it okay so it doesn't mean that every linear system is question a system of linear equations you can solve it but we can uh, find out what can be solved and what not can be, uh, what uh, cannot be solved <coughs> i provided an example here yeah? let's say you have a, a system of linear equations where you know 2x1 plus x2 equals to 0 and then x x1 minus 2x2 is also 0. So what is x1 and what is x2 in this case? All right. It turns out that um, uh, here the determinant is not 0 because 2 times 4 minus 9 is not 0 but b is 0. In this system linear equations the only solutions that can solve all this is when x is it x1 equal to 0 and x2 is also equal to 0 there's no other numbers okay so we call this you know trivial solution you know uh, the answer is zero everywhere all right so this is not, not nothing really this is an example where the the the, the solution is zeros everywhere uh, everywhere meaning the x1 x2 x3 Zero. okay what if uh, just now let's say you cannot find the inverse really you 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 cannot use this one <laughs> all right uh, because this doesn't exist right. for example we like this one okay so um, sometimes there there if if you cannot find um, the inverse uh, inverse doesn't exist for example okay 
you have two possibilities one is what we call no possible solutions that means you cannot find the solution at all or there's another possibility where you have infinitely many solutions Okay, two cases here. Okay, I want you to look at it. I've already put an example here. One is this one here, where it turns out that it has no solutions because the this one is not consistent. Here, the first row is uh, we find out that it's minus x one plus two x two is equal to seven. But then down here, we get this basically the same. Basically, we get the same thing here. Okay, but this one is equals to minus five is seven, so it's not consistent. Uh, no possible solution. So in this case, meh, we can say the system has no solution, no possible solution. So we just abandon that. Say meh, we move on to the next one. All right. There's also another case where there's no possible. Uh, there there is infinitely many solutions. For example, this one. Okay, if you look at it, the determinant is zero, but you don't know whether it's where there is no solution or infinite many solutions so the way you find out is okay i try to expand everything here i expand the first row x1 minus 2x2 i got five and the second row i get this all right and then it turns out that if i play around if, if i algebraically manipulate it i i found that x1 minus 2x2 equals to five deck like above so that means i can put any number <laughs> that satisfy this equation here that and it will give me the solution for example yeah uh let's say i think uh, uh let's say let's see let's see if uh let's say x1 uh equal to um nine for example okay and x2 equals to four i think that satisfies this okay nine minus two times oh sorry not not four uh, I meant to say two. Uh, two, okay, two. Equals to. Equals to uh, this number here, five. All right, and I think if I use eighteen and four, I think I will get the same answer as well. Am I going to get the same answer? Hmm, probably not. Uh, but my point is, oh, is it seventeen? I think. Yep, seventeen minus eight. Yeah, here we go. All right. And there's more. You can find infinitely many answers, you know, that can satisfy this. So there's infinitely many x1 and many x2 that can um, uh, get, you, get you to solve this. All right. I don't really like inverse because when it comes to 3 by 3 matrices, it's really hard for me to... Uh, find the inverse and everything and find the adjoint okay so but i like to do another um another way of doing it which is called the kramer's kramer's rule kramer's rule we don't have to find the inverse we only have to work with the determinants that's it okay that's it but the the, the way we do it is a bit tricky Okay, let me show you here. Let me show you an example. Let me just use the same. Uh, I, I'm just going to use the same examples before. I think this one here, uh, here. Let's use the Kramer's rule. So I've shown you how to use the inverse rule. So this is the inverse rule, which is hey, it might work, but I I don't really like it. <laughs> I'm just going to use Kramer's rule. So Kramer's rule is what it's saying is this. Um, x uh, 3 so Kramer's rule is we don't have to find the inverse but we have to work with the determinants all right is everyone still here or am i talking alone huh? okay uh, everyone is still here all right i hope i can show this okay to you all right so uh, all you need to do is you work with columns by columns okay let me show you how to do it so we need to find x really yeah we need to find x x1 x2 all right 
let's say you need to find what is x1 okay the way to do it is okay if you want to find x1 you look at the column identify the column here all right and then replace that you make a new matrix you replace that first column with three one here okay you, you do this you rewrite everything one but you replace the first column because we are working with x1 the first um, unknown here with three and this one all right find the determinant of that all right here we, okay what we have done here identify the first column replace the column with a b all right find its determinant that's what we're trying to do three times minus three minus three minus minus one minus three so this is And then uh, x1 will then become uh, the determinant here, all right? One over determinant a, all right? So determinant here we already found it out. It's minus two. So what is the determinant of a? Uh, minus one minus. Oh man, minus one minus one. Hmm, did it become. Uh, minus 2 and then here 2 so x1 is 1 see you don't have to find the inverse you just work with the determinant but the tricky part is this you need to uh, you know uh, if you're working with x1 find uh, uh, the first column replace it with this b here replace it there this new matrix find that determinant and then divide that determinant with determinant of a a which is this lah. so now we got x1 x2 how to find x2 we do the same thing again x2 now is we need to oh sorry sorry about that x1 let me rewrite you okay so we need to find that we need to work with second column because x2 second column and then we just take that one replace it with <coughs> replace it with uh, the b matrix so what i got here is i'm trying to find the determinant of okay let's rewrite this one one i'm replacing that with three minus one so what's the determinant here one minus uh, minus one minus three minus one minus three minus four all right cool so according to this uh, x2 will be just x2 well i'm going to determinant a i already know determinant a is actually minus two calculated here minus one minus one okay and then determinant of this new matrix here one three one minus one is four so i got one over minus two times so this is two am i correct so now i've got x1 equal to one and x2 equals to 2 just like what we had before one two okay <coughs> nice use this method if you don't like to find inverse <laughs> I, I will use this method okay um i've also provided an example okay what for two by two matrix is kind of easy for three by three is actually as as simple as 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 one two three <laughs> okay what you need to do is just basically uh, I'll, give, I'll give you an example here we do the same thing we if you want to solve x1 we take the um, column one here replace that with this sorry replace that with that okay so it becomes whatever here we put it here find that determinant of this new matrix Okay, whatever that determinant is, divide that by the determinant of this matrix. All right, find determinant of three by three. I already show you uh, in the previous notes here how to find determinant of three by three. All right. So I would I would recommend this if you need to solve a system of linear equation with three by three. Uh, sorry, uh, with three systems uh, systems of three linear equations. Use determinant uh, Kramer's rule easier rather than finding inverse. But if you want to do inverse, it's fine. It's up to you. But uh, it's personal preferences, of 
course <laughs> at this point yeah so again x2 you take uh, if you're working with trying to find x2 um, just take the, uh, the, the the second column replace it with whatever you have be here it so become new matrix find the determinants of that new matrix okay whatever that is divide that by the determinant of matrix a matrix a being this original matrix here this original matrix this is matrix a always remember that okay same thing and then uh, if you do this you can get x2 so you can do this x3 uh, the, another reason why i like kramer's rule is because um let's say i don't need to find all x1 x2 x3 i just need to find x3 so i can just go straight here you know you can just go straight and do ju just do one of this i don't need to find the whole inverse finding s1 s2 3 so i can just do this so this is nice so i provide you some examples here as well how to work with a uh, three by three system i implore you to look at this so that you can understand and then um, uh, do some more examples uh, by yourself okay <laughs> I've shown you we have done three things one is uh, we use inverse matrix which is well sometimes work but I don't really like it um, another one is using Kramer's rule I like it because I don't have to work with inverse I can just uh, calculate determinant using some tricks I can get the answer all right and there's another one which I really like Gaussian elimination Gauss is a mathematician um, back in like 300 400 years ago he's a genius anything with his name along with Euler anything that has his name you, you need to learn that Gauss Euler Newton uh, stuff like that. okay so what basically um, to work with Gaussian elimination is basically what we're doing is we're trying to simplify the idea is the basic idea is simplify the matrix a before solving okay let me show you what i mean by simplify okay let's say you have this matrix right here oh let me make it bigger all right Let, let's see if you have this type of system linear equation don't you think this is so easy to solve The reason is because one is because you know this is zero times x one and then you have your zero times x one plus zero times x two i'm saying this is easy to solve is because you know you can work uh, this question upwards you know you find x3 first because x3 is obviously x3 is 14 divided by 7 2 and then you get the number 6 um, uh, x3 is 2 what you need to do is just replace x3 with 2 here and then you can calculate x2 which is this is 25 minus 20 is minus 15 so this is minus 15 and then i know x3 and x2 already so i can just replace this too i can just place this this is minus 15 so all in so what i'm doing is just basically work with the you know algebraic manipulation just you know go so back substituting starting from the bottom solve 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 at the end i got all x1 all right and then this is what uh four bring here is zero minus 15 times five uh that is 40 is it 45 no uh it's 49 divided put it back here x1 divided by three i got 25 x1 is 25 okay so yeah so I get, yeah, the solution is 25 minus 15, 2. Yep. Same thing what I had before. So, <clears throat> so if you have something like what we call here, this matrix here, I, will, I like to call this upper triangular matrix, U. Upper triangular meaning that um, the triangle here, upper triangle, is all numbers, but below that triangle is all zero something like this this is upper triangle all right this is the upper triangle up that triangle all numbers below that triangle is zero here is also upper that triangle is all numbers below that zero here is also upper triangle are all numbers uh, non-zero numbers and below that are all zero 
So if I have something like this, I can really solve this easy. I don't you have to use inverse. I don't have to use determinants. I what I what I would do is just calculate x4 first because three times x4 is 12. X4 is obviously four. I put this back in here uh, and then find x3, put this back in here. I know this, I know find x2, put this back up here, x1. So I don't have to use no inverse, no determinant. I don't have to use that. But what I need to do is basically make sure my A here, this A matrix here, are all in what I call upper triangular form. Or what we call here is the row echelon, echelon, row echelon form. I think the the how to pronounce echelon. Hmm. Echelon. Echelon. <laughs> I've been used, I've been called it echelon for for, for so long. Echelon. Okay, echelon. Uh, what we call row echelon form. Row echelon form is basically that, you know, the triangle up here, they're all non-zeros, or may maybe you might have some zeros, it's okay. But what's important is anything below that triangle are all zeros. It's all zero, 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 zero. So this is called row echelon form. Okay, so, so Gaussian is a bit smart he doesn't want to use inverse he doesn't want to use a determinant what he's trying to do is okay give me any matrix any matrix i don't know three five four one two ten uh, nine seven minus four i don't know give give me something like this what i will do is i will change this to its row echelon form where i have numbers 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 here numbers here numbers here but all the rest are zeros because then what I will do is just I'll just do back substitution. Okay. All right. So Gaussian, it doesn't need inverse, doesn't need determinant. But the work that we have to do is how to turn from here this to this. We call the process of changing from here to here is the row operations. Meaning that we are going to work row by row to make sure that it appears like this zeros We will make these numbers zero zero zeros. Okay. All right. So row operations what we need to do So basically row operations is the point is Okay To to make matrix a easier. All right to change uh, any matrix, any matrix A. In this case, um, uh, is a, a is a n by n matrix in the, in the linear systems problems. Any matrix A to its row echelon form. Okay, so how to do this? How can we change it? We are not really actually changing the matrix. Actually, we're just changing its form. Okay, there are three things that you you can do. One is swap position of two rows. So, for example, if you have uh, three, five, four, one, two, nine, what was it just now? Oh, one to ten, or whatever. One to nine, uh, nine minus seven minus four. Let's say, okay, if you want to work with, um, If we can work with matrix uh, row by row, so let's call this row one. Let's call this row two, row three. Okay, I hope I, I mean so this should be big R. Okay, I can swap any of these um, rows. Okay, I can swap it. Let me write it here. I hate my handwriting there. Okay. Let's say um, let's say I have a matrix uh, matrix A here in the form of let's say it's zero uh, four minus one I have zero zero three and I have minus five one uh, eight for example okay I can do the row operations I can swap the 
rows to make it a row echelon form so i can do this i can swap this here to this up here and swap r2 to r3 and swap this one to here so that i can get minus 5 1 8 0 4 minus 1 0 0 3 so i can do that so now it's in row echelon form nice okay so i can do this so if i have any matrix uh, any systems of equations with matrix a looks like this it's easy i can just back substitute everything okay so the other two operation that you can do is you can multiply row by a non-scalar um, non-zero scalar it means you, you probably you want to times that whatever times two so this becomes two four and eighteen you can do that uh, or add to one row a scalar multiple of each other for example you can do r3 minus um, ri whatever uh, sorry r3 minus r1 or r3 minus two times r1 okay all right i'll show you here example here let's say we have a matrix here this is a so this is matrix a and this matrix x which we need to find and b all right we need to solve this system of equation one we can use inverse you can find the inverse of this matrix put it up here multiply the inverse matrix with b you can get x y so three fine next thing is you can do kramer's rule find the determinant find x one okay good but right now we are going to use gauss gaussian elimination okay so how to do gaussian elimination is first you need to change matrix a into its row echelon form and then from that back substitute okay so let's do the row echelon form first i want to turn this matrix here into upper triangular matrix i want it, i want to have zero here zero here and zero here how am i going to do that okay so um uh, for for me uh, you can do it anyways you want but uh, this here what, what i've done here we can start by trying to eliminate the first coefficient of r2 i want to eliminate this i want to make this zero first okay how do i make that zero <clears throat> okay i will take uh the first one row row one okay i multiply by two so i can get um, if I multiply it by 2, I can get here 2 minus 2 minus 4. And then R2 minus 2 R2. So that I want, this can be gone. 2 minus 2 will become 0. 1 minus minus 2 will become 3. And minus 3 minus 4 will become 1. But don't forget, we need to do this for this one also. Okay, so R2, which is minus 3, minus 2, 1, it will become seven i think no minus five. Oh yeah seven you're right seven here so what i do here is this uh r1 stays as it, as it is so okay so r2 what i've done here is i'm taking r2 minus it with two times r r1 so what i've done before so i got here got zero i got three and one and he, here seven just like what i did here right okay just like what i did here zero three one seven okay uh, and then uh, uh if i've done that i want to make this zero also i want to make this down there zero also let me use this color so i want to make this zero also okay the way i do it do it is i think r3 minus four times r1 so what i do is uh it, so 4, it will become 4, this will become minus 4, this will become minus 8. Because times 4, right? So that will become 0, 2 minus minus that will become 1 minus minus 8 will become. So what I'll do here is I've got this. All right, so this is my first step. My A is here right now. Okay, but don't, don't forget you need to work with this number as well. Okay. And then, uh, important, make sure you remember. Eh? And then what I do is, because it's not complete yet, so what I'm left to do is just I want to turn this number in to become 0. How would I do that? Okay, R3 minus 2 times R2. So 2 times R2, this is 6. This is 2. This is 14. 
So R3 minus R2, R2 so 6 minus 6 becomes 0. 9 minus 2 becomes 7. 21 minus 14 becomes 7. So right now, my matrix is in, my matrix A is in H, row echelon form. Now what I need to do is just back substitute. Starting from the bottom, 7x to 7, x3, go up, replace x3 again. Okay, do that, got the answer, do that, got the answer. Okay, therefore, solution system equation will go to this place. Okay, now uh, step by step, what you need to do is basically if you have uh, system linear equations, rewrite them in this form. Make sure you know which one is A matrix, which is X, which is B. Okay, perform row operations as many times as needed to get matrix A in the row echelon form or upper triangle. Upper triangle just now. And then perform back substitution to find these numbers. Okay. All right. So um, my advice is if you uh, open your Glean James textbook, um, there's a there's a, a, a chapter on Gauss elimination. All right. Uh, find examples because you already know how to do it the way I teach you. So the, um, please try and use the, the this way that I uh, taught you and then try to do the uh, questions in the Glean James textbook. If you can get the same answer, that's fine. That's That means you're learning. Okay. There's another thing called uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination. But I think you can take a look at it and see what, what it is doing. But basically, the, the, it's the same concept as Gauss elimination. It's just they are working more towards the trying to make the a matrix more reduced okay uh, which I think is uh, well it's not necessary but it would be nice to know but I will test you I think if you if you know Gauss elimination you can get this pretty fast and I think you can just use this anyway without resorting to this okay so this is um, uh, hopefully it's a two hour just a recap of last week um, next uh, uh, Wednesday uh, we are going to look into uh, two things, what we call eigenrank and the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, uh, two, two of these, this important concept, which we will learn a lot in vibration control and stuff. Okay, so...